I didn't have a lot of time to do shopping for the children, but I did pick up a few things for them. Well, you being home is uh, the best gift they could ever receive, and I double that. <sighs> Sweetheart, you feel uh, wound up uh, like a coil spring. What is it? Do you have a bad flight? No, no, no. The flight was fine. I just wish my time in Houston had been a little bit more productive. That's all. I can't dwell on that, though. I tell you what, I'm going to go to the hospital. Yeah. If I can't offer Roger a cure, maybe I can give him some support and some hope. Well, I don't want you to go just yet, honey. Not, uh, not until I've told you the latest news. What news? Is it Roger? Well, just brace yourself. It isn't good. Doing here? You're supposed to be supposed to be home. Alexa, I'm fine. It's you I'm worried about. Look at oh. you. You look like you just went 15 rounds with the champ, yeah. Lair. Well, at least with the prize fight, you're allowed to hit back. All we've been doing here is taking it on the chin. Did something go wrong in the operation? No, 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 no. The bone marrow transplant went fine. No complications. Well, that's good, isn't it? Larry? I mean, Roger's gonna respond to that, isn't he? Well, for a few moments, a few hours, I don't know. Brenda, I think we've lost him. Unless there's a miracle, he's only got a few hours to live. Max, we've got to get out of here. We have the antidote. We've got to bring it up to my dad. Megan, that's no use. The door's locked. No, we've got to open the door. Forget doors. it. We've got to find a way to stop these walls from coming in. Max, there's still moving. Damn, this is still as we had done. If we don't stop these walls, we are going to die. Look at this. This is the most wonderful Alicia, Al? Al. Hello, darling. Oh, how are you? Have you been all right? Has my big boy been all right? Oh, he's been mm. wonderful. The question is, how are you? Oh, I am just thrilled to be alive. How have you been? You been good? You been good? Thank you for being such an angel and looking after me. Gabrielle, I was more than happy to help, but the last time I saw you, Max practically dragged you out of the house. Where did he take you? <sighs> Would you do something for Mummy? Would you go and build me another truck over there, sweetheart? Okay. Off you go. Go and play. You won't believe where he took me. He took me to Eterna. What? Well, not actually inside Eterna. He wanted me to help him find the entrance. Why? What for? For his beloved Megan. He's convinced that she went inside to find the antidote for her father. Oh, my God, is that possible? Well, when it comes to Eterna, anything's possible. Well, where is Max now and, and Megan? I have no idea about Megan, but Max... Max found another entrance, and he went inside, and he wouldn't listen to me. I couldn't stop him. Well, have you contacted anyone, the police or the, or the rangers up there yes, on the map? Yes, I called the authorities as soon as I came down. The only thing I can hope for is that they get to him in time. Not that I care what happens to Max. It's just I'm worried for Al's sake. Mm. Well, I, I wish that there was something I could do. I... Well, you've been a lifesaver. Thank you for looking after Al like that, and... All we can do is just wait and hear some news from Lantana Mountain. Yeah, I'd like to be able to wait with you, but unfortunately, I have the opening of You've the... got the opening yes, tonight? Yeah. Oh, God, with everything happening, I completely forgot. Yeah, but, but if you need me to stay, no, no, I'm no. sure that I could... It's so important, please, oh. to you and Michael, I understand, and I will be fine. Good. Gabrielle, there's just one thing that I, I don't really understand. When Max came here earlier, he was furious with you. Did that have something to do with Eterna and the antidote? No, no, absolutely not. We just had a disagreement about visitation, and I don't really want to discuss it oh, in front of Oh, no, sure, of course you don't. But, but if it was that and not Eterna that he was upset about, then why did he insist that you take him to the entrance? He's uh, smitten with Megan. I don't think there's anything he wouldn't do to prove himself to her, including risk his neck trying to save her father. Mm. Well, that's more than smitten. That's love. Yeah. I, I really don't want to go into it, as I said, not in front of the little one. Besides, I've had my fill of Max for the rest of my life, I think. Was that for my benefit or yours? As I've said, he can follow Megan to the ends of the earth. But for Al's sake, I certainly hope nothing happens to him. Okay, okay, we gotta be calm, we gotta think this through. Hey, what is there to think about Max? Oh my god, this mechanism is perfectly walking and it's gotta be all good. We can break it. Think of the theater, this is called the last minute solution to an impossible situation. <laughs> I never doubted it. Max! Gotcha. Oh, god. 
<laughs> oh, hey, you can keep killing me like this for the rest of my life, but right now, I think we gotta worry about getting out of here. Sorry. Uh, That's right, the door is still locked. Nobody knows that we're down here. Well, I wouldn't say nobody. Gabrielle knows I came in here after you. Gabrielle? Yeah. Since when does she help anybody but herself? I can't argue with you there. If we don't get out of here fast, we're going to suffocate, Max. If the poison doesn't kill us first. Roger. Oh, God, Clint, he's not... No, no, he, he's still alive. Thank God. But he has developed aplastic anemia. That means that his body's immune system can't fight off infections. But he's got to hold on just a little bit longer, darling. He's got to at least until they find the antidote. Well, that's the way Larry and his team felt, and that's why they took this last step today. What last step? Uh, a bone marrow transplant. In fact, uh, the operation should w be over with by now. <sighs> Honey, I know this isn't the, the kind of news you wanted to come home to, but Larry felt that there was a chance his transplant could help. What kind of a chance? Well, sweetheart, you know how Larry is. I mean, he's very guarded in this kind of thing. How much of a chance? The odds of the transplant making a big difference are very slim. But Larry and Dr. Elliot both felt that they didn't have anything to lose. They have nothing to lose. Honey, I know this must seem terribly unfair to you. I mean, you have just finished your search, and it looked like you were, you were going to be able to be reunited with your past. I don't care about my past. I don't care about what I might lose. I was thinking about Megan and Sarah. After all, it's their father whom I... Honey, Larry... Larry's the best, you know that. And if there's any way he can save Roger, he'll do it. All those doctors, all put together, haven't been able to save him, have they? Somebody's got to do something. We've got to at least give him hope. Right now. Right now, my one concern is you. Well, I think I'm going to go to the hospital, all right? Vicky, Please look. don't tell me that there's nothing I can do there, all right? If, if I just stand there, if, if I can just be there for my daughter and for Roger, that's, that's reason enough. All right, all right. If you feel that strongly about it, fine. But you're not going along. Dr. Marshall, call the operator. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you have a little water here, okay? Oh. You're taking care of me. I should be taking care of you. I'm not the one who's been up working myself to a bone all night and day, Larry. <laughs> Damn frustrated. Baby, you can't blame yourself. Well, who am I going to blame, Brent? I'm the doctor. Crying out loud. At least that's what the, what the diplomas say on my wall. Listen. It's the poison. It's... You are going to beat this thing. I know it. I don't know. I really don't know. Elliot and I have tried everything we know. and we, we're, we're losing him. His system is just too far gone to respond to treatment. We're no matter what we're doing, we're losing Listen to me. You are a great doctor, Larry no. Wallet. Not a good doctor. You're a great doctor. Look at this. And you have worked like hell on this case, and you've done everything that you can possibly do, but if the good Lord thinks that isn't enough, who are we to question that? Oh, the good Lord gave me hands and skills and talents, and I, at least I should be able to use them. And you have used them. And for all you know, he might pull through this thing. You're not doing anybody any good, though, Larry, sitting in here, banging your head against the wall, and certainly not Roger, and that's why I'm here. I'm going to take you home with me. Okay? Honey, yep. I can't go now. Listen, I... listen to this. You know what I'm going to fix? Chicken fried steak, oh, okay. and mashed potatoes and gravy, and black-eyed peas oh. and cornbread. And all those things are going to make you forget what an awful day this is. So come on. Oh, do I love you for that <laughs> offer. I really do. Thank oh. you. But I can't let you work yourself like that. I can't Larry, let you work yourself. I please, can't. Besides, I have I to stay here. Brenda, I have to stay here in case Roger needs me or the family needs me. I tell you what, you want to help me? You really want to help? Mm -hmm. Then you go home and you get some rest yourself. Why can't Brenda, I? Brenda, please, I promise you, I will, I will stop by later. I'll find time and I'll, I'll check, check in on you then, all right? All right, all right, if you insist. I really insist. But I'm going to hold you to that promise. I want you to come over. And I'll hold you tight. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, hurry up now. Thanks. Oh, I thought you'd gone. Well, I started to, but I wanted to wait till you put Al down for his nap. I had something I wanted to say to you. Look, if it's about Max, please save oh, Well, breath. no, actually, it's about you. Look, maybe this is totally out of line, but I wanted to offer you some, some friendly advice, for what it's worth. Gabrielle, it doesn't take a genius to see how worried you are about Max. Look, Alicia, Max is Al's father. Naturally, I don't want anything to happen to him. But I think it's a lot more than that. I saw you and Max together earlier. The way you fought. People don't generate sparks like that unless they have really deep feelings for each other. We used to. I'm not denying that. But whatever we felt for one another is long gone. All right, mm -hmm. you can believe what you want to believe. I won't contradict you. What I'm saying is this. When Max returns, I think you should try to spend more time with him. Are you serious? You saw us together. We couldn't spend two minutes in a room without exploding. Is that meant to be good for Al? What would be good for Al would be for his mother and father to spend more time together. Let Max come over here and visit Al. Bring Al over to Max's new place. Oh, no, not that ghastly excuse for a bar, please. Well, it's Max's home and Al's, too, when he's there. Give it a chance, Gabrielle. Give Max a chance. Who knows what starts out as some sort of civil arrangement might turn into something more. Alicia, I know you are trying to help, but believe Do me. Do it for yourself and Al. Look, in time, the three of you might become a family, a real family. You want everybody to be as happy as you and Michael? Well, yes, I suppose I do. Is there something wrong with that? No. No, I suppose not. But you see, ever since the custody battle, Max and I have very deep scars, things that will not be able to be erased or forgiven. Oh, never is, is a very long time. Yeah, well, it's not long enough for me and Max, I'm afraid. The only thing I can hope for is that he comes out of this mess alive and well so that we can come to some sort of understanding for Al. Understanding, she says. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a start. You never give up, do you? No, I don't. Look, I, I can't help it. I'm an incurable romantic. And actually, I better get going or my equally romantic husband will be furious. Oh, I do hope that uh, he'll be seeing you at the opening tonight. Well, if I can get a sitter, I'll be there. If you're talking about the opening tonight, forget it. There isn't going to be one thanks to the Buchanans. I clawed my way down here to get this antidote. I am not going to let anyone keep me from getting it out. Now you're talking. Let's see what we can do. Wait, hold on. I got something here. Uh, yeah. Jam this in the door. Okay, now you push as hard as you can. Ready? Okay, go. Go. Yeah. Ah. Damn. No, Max, try again. No, Megan. No, I am not going to die down here, and I'm not going to let my father die Megan, either. you're just going to hurt yourself. Come Forget on, it. Max, this is the only way out. Listen. You hear that? Someone's out there. Come in, Dr. Wallach. Dan. Well, I did hear Dr. Wallach, didn't I? Yeah, I was expecting to see your dad. The, yeah. the other Dr. Wallach. The other yeah. Dr. Wallach. Yeah, I'm sorry you got the wrong one. Oh, no, I'm glad to see you. Well, that's good, that's good. I uh, I just stopped by to see how you were doing. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I went to the hospital, though, earlier, mm -hmm. and I saw your father, and he has taken Roger Gordon's case very hard, Dan. Yeah, well, that's dad. You know, if you could teach me to humanize myself with my patients, maybe you can teach them some detachment. Teach, teach your father not to care so much. Yeah, that'll be the day. Sure would like to teach him, though, how not to drive himself so hard. He worries me. Oh, it looks like he's not the only one. I'm just cooking a little bit. That's all. Uh, just, 
Just cooking, that's all. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna fix something real special for your dad tonight. If you can get him away from the hospital, you know? Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a real good idea, Brenda. I think I should help you uh, cook this meal. No, it's fine, Dan. I know what I'm gonna fix already. In fact, here it is. It's a little warm for blanket, isn't it, Brenda? Uh, Dan. It's just what I thought I'd find. Sarah, believe me, I'm not hiding anything from Larry, you. It's just too... Sarah, darling, no, you... Vicky. Oh, Roger. Vicky, when did you get back? Oh, about a half hour ago. I tried to fill her in on the situation as best I could. Vicky, Dad's in there. I, well, I keep asking Larry the same question all over and over again. Has this bone marrow transplant worked or not? Well, when I think of what you put yourself through to give your father his chance, it has to work, right, Larry? What well, I was trying to explain to Sarah, it's just too early to tell. We need more time on this. Time? Time is the one thing he doesn't have. Vicky's right. It isn't working, is it, Larry? My father isn't getting any better at all. Sarah, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, your father is lucid. He's been asking for you and for Megan. And Vicky wants to know the minute you've come back to town. Larry, uh, could I have a word with you? Of course. Excuse me. <sighs> well, they think they can protect us, you know? I mean, as if we don't know that... Honey, I'm sorry I wasn't here just to be with you and Megan. Where's Megan, by the way? I'm almost afraid to say. Say what? We found out that the antidote for Dad's poison is down in Eterna. In Eterna? No, you don't think... God. Oh, God, Sarah. Somebody's got to go up to the mountain and stop. No, no, wait, oh. Vicky, Vicky. Bo's already gone up there to check it out. Now, we have a crisis right here with Dad that we have to deal with. Darling, you know I would do anything in the world for your father, but I don't well, know what I Well, you heard what Larry said. He's been asking for you, Vicky. He's been asking especially for you. Now, if you could just go in there. You know, I think if he could see your face, it might just give him a few more hours. Sweetheart, I, I don't really know that that Vicky, would make a difference. I can't pretend with you anymore. My father loves you. He's always loved you. If you could just go in there and, and give him some kind of hope, even if it's just for a little while, that might be all the time we need to find that antidote. Well, I can't very well refuse you, can I? He's taking out the hinge pins. We'll push from in here if you can pull from up there! You done up there? You done? Push. Okay, we're gonna push. On the count of three. One, two, three. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, so happy to see you. Oh, Bo, well, hey, I owe you one for this. You're in the nick of time. Make it nine. You saved Sarah and me with that psycho rehearsal. I think we're even, huh? Yeah. Hey, can we, like, take care of this reunion later? We gotta get out of here. Looks like the accommodation's a little cramped Yeah, well, it's not just the walls. It's also the poison. It's still in the air. The poison that's killing my dad. <laughs> yeah, she's right. We gotta get out of here. About the Landview Hospital. Guess what this is? The antidote? You got All right. It. My Jeep's up top. All right. We got out here soon. All right, come on, Megan. We got the antidote. So, this is the Gordon family mausoleum, is it? This is where all, we're all supposed to die. Well, we didn't die, did we, Danton, dear? No, we're going to live to defeat you yet. Megan, no! We've got to get out of here before you set up any more booby traps. Well, either you're a woman uh, who's been working in a department store all day, or you're a lady woman with toxemia. Please. I wonder which, Brenda. Don't be mad at me, Dan. Brenda, do you constantly have to be reminded of what this kind of swelling means? Dan, I'm monitoring my condition. Yeah, while you're running around in the kitchen whipping up a special dinner for my dad. Listen, when I started feeling funny in there, I came and I settled myself in on the couch, and I opened up my medical books, and I took my pulse, and it was absolutely normal, so there's nothing for us to worry about, yeah, okay? Yeah, this time. This time, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot. You haven't even gotten to dessert yet. 
How about some crepe Suzettes? Oh, yeah, that, that'll be real easy stop to it. make. You're getting angry. Because you're playing Russian roulette with a wooden spoon in a frying pan, Listen Brenda. Listen to me, Dan. This morning you were talking about how you wanted so much to improve on your bedside manner. Well, this is an example of what you need to do because a patient doesn't respond to a bunch of cynical remarks and, and, and being yelled at. That's right. You are absolutely right. But when a nurse forgets her own training, Brenda, I'm sorry, but that gets me a little riled up. All right. I did something really stupid, and I, and I accept that. I just did it because I want your father to be able to come over here and relax a little bit and to get a little comfortable this evening, okay? Yeah, yeah. But when Dad comes here and he finds out what has happened, hey. he is going to get pretty mad. Hey, you wait a minute. You're not going to mention a word of this to your father. Do you hear me? And it's not for me. It's for him. He has had a terrible day. All right. <sighs> all right, all right. I promise I won't say anything to him. But you've got to promise me that you're not going to do this again in the future. All right. I promise. I even cross my heart. And one more thing. I'm cooking dinner. You? Y yes, me! You are going to cook dinner. Daniel Wolek is cooking dinner. Oh, I... Now, what, what's the joke here? I don't get it. I now, can't... if I can read a medical book, I can certainly decipher a recipe uh -huh. here. Chicken fried steaks by Dan. Yeah, yeah well, I would like to see this. You're gonna see it. You're gonna taste it. And you're gonna love it. No, no, just, okay, now just watch it out. Here. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, maybe we can order out for some pizza. No, we are not. You're gonna do it. I love this. A nurse's dream. I'm gonna call out the orders, and you're gonna get in there and do all the dirty work for a change. All right? Shoot, let's go for it. Okay. First thing, you are going to peel and chop. One onion, Doctor. One onion. You got it. <sighs> Mr. and Mrs. Haywood Dixon regretfully decline. Mr. and Mrs. Carlton Edwards will be unable to attend. Mrs. Marshall K. Woodward and daughter Vivian must decline with regret. Now we know the answer to the question, what happens if they gave a gallery opening and nobody showed up? Michael, I don't understand this. How can everybody that you invited say no? I understand it. The ladies and gentlemen of Landview cannot offend the Supreme Majesties, the Buchanans. Michael, before you go accusing the Buchanans, there just might be another explanation. Oh, darling, you have a very generous soul, and I love you for it. But the moment Bo aired the uh, elevator accident story, he scared off all our potential guests. Oh, but come on. You've had the elevators repaired, and Rafe Garrison sent over another inspector to say that the hotel was perfectly safe. Yes, another Buchanan touch. First they shut us down, then they make a public spectacle out of the so-called inspection. We're lucky they didn't hire a skywriter to spell it out. Stay away from the Landview Grand by order of Asa Buchanan. Michael, I honestly do not believe that the Buchanans are involved in some sort of plot to destroy you. But even if they did use their influence somehow, we can ride out the storm. Yeah, I'd like to know how without any guests. Well, I do have plenty of capital in Europe that's earning interest, and, and Absolutely I not. I will not use any more of your money. Oh, come on, come on. It may take some time, but all three of us can get this hotel running and make a success of it. Right now, I would just like one good crack at the Buchanans. Well, I have always believed that the best way to fight your enemies, real or imagined, is to get to work. I think the first thing we should do is get back to the hotel and reassure the staff. No, staff. no. I, uh, if I went there now, I would just depress everybody. <sighs> you go ahead, darling. I, uh... I, uh, I need to discuss something with Gabrielle. Oh. All right, I'll see you there All later. Right. Bye. I'm really sorry about everything you've been through the last couple of weeks. I know... <clears throat> I know how hard this has been on you and Vicky because of the way my father feels about her, but I know that he never meant to hurt anyone. Now, look, now you stop apologizing. Right now, it's... it's your father we want to think about. The best thing we can do for him is pray for him. I've tried, Clint. It's not helping him. Well, your prayers have pulled off some pretty miraculous things. They turned me around. Remember when I lost my sight? Huh? Yeah, that was prayer and a lot of hard work. And a lot of love. You know, love can pull off some pretty incredible things if you get that half a chance. Then why isn't it helping my father? Megan and I love him so much, we'd do anything for him and Vic... Well, maybe... maybe she can help him. It's just if he felt like he had someone that he could fight for. God, I'm 
sorry, Clint. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Stop apologizing. Right now, it's your father we gotta worry about. Thanks. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a few minutes. Sure. No, no, there's plenty of time for us to talk later on. Plenty of time. That's a good one. It's not a joke. You're going to beat this. Even if it kills me, huh? Please don't. Please. No, it's all right. Everything's all right now. My one fear was that I would die without seeing you first. You are not going to die. I've just spoken to Larry. He said that the bone marrow transplant was everything they hoped it would be. Mm, right. The procedure was a triumph, unfortunately. It was too little, too late. Please, I don't want you to talk that way. We both know the truth, Vicky. We don't need to say it. I can feel it. My body's given up. But you mustn't give up hoping run out of things to hope for. I've struggled so hard in my life to find something in my life worth fighting for. But the only thing that mattered was you. Well, I'm here, aren't I? Yes. Close your eyes? You'll just turn your head to the wall? And give up? And that's it? Is that really what you want, Roger? Is that all we mean to you? Megan and Sarah and me? Vicky, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry. Yes, well, damn it. You have made me very angry. You can't leave us like this. You can't leave me like this. You cannot make me love you again and then go away and leave me. I won't let you do it. What you just said. Yes, I'm not going to let you die. No, before that, you said you loved me. Yes, I did. And I'll say it to you again, I do love you. And I want you in my life. Please, Roger, if you don't have the will and the courage to fight for yourself, do it for me. You said you love me, or did you lie to me all along, too? How can you say that? You know I love you. Then fight. We found each other again in Eterna, and nothing, not time or distance, nothing could keep us apart, not even death. Only you can do it now. Or you can choose to keep on fighting and live. Before you say anything, I want you to know that I understand. Understand what? Well, you put up quite a show in front of Alicia just now, but I can tell that you don't like to be beholden to her money. Well, she loves me. She wants to help. Yes, she loves you very much, but she doesn't understand you. She doesn't understand the kind of pride that makes you Michael Grant. The hotel fiasco was just another inconvenience to her, but to me... It was your last chance, wasn't it? Well, when I think of all the money I spent trying to find a Turner, all the times I neglected my business over that damned place. Well, no wonder you wanted the reopening to be a success. It was your, it was your opportunity to recoup all your losses, yes, wasn't it? Yes, it was my opportunity, my perfect opportunity, until Bo Buchanan stepped in. Oh, that family. 
Every child and grandchild is born into wealth, respectability, and limitless opportunity. I want the same for my child. No more, no less. Come on, Michael. You and Alicia can perfectly provide very handsomely for your child. Well, maybe it's my stubborn pride, but I want the legacy to come from me and not my wife's family money. You're right. It is your stubborn pride. But I admire that in you. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Actually, uh, the reason I came over here was to uh, apologize for turning a deaf ear to you earlier today when you asked for my help. It's okay. You had your own crisis to deal with. Well, that's no excuse. You were, you were desperate to find Max, and I uh, refused to get involved. Well, you weren't the only one. I called the authorities, and the sergeant didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I've thought about it, and I, I understand what you need. I want to help now. You want to help? Whoa, wait a minute. You didn't want to do anything. Ariel, a man can change his mind, can't he? So, uh, tell me where the new entrance is, and I'll get up there and see if I can find Max and get a hold of the antidote. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't give a damn about Max or the antidote. You want me to show you the entrance so you can get your hands on the gold, am I wrong? I need that money to keep the hotel afloat, okay? No. No, I need the money so that I can look in the mirror in the morning, okay? At least you're being honest. I'm also a bit desperate. As soon as those poachers find out about the new entrance, I will lose my chance. Your chance? Okay, Ariel, our chance to split the gold fairly. Uh-uh, not fairly. Evenly, there's a difference. I plan on leaving my son a legacy, too. Okay, okay. There's no time to quibble. You will have your equal share. Now tell me where the entrance is. Dr. Foster, call 3711. Dr. Foster, call 3711. Oh, yeah, here. I think after today I'm swearing off coffee forever. Well, some things are easier to give up than others, Larry. Yeah. How was Vicky when you uh, looked in on Roger? Well, she was very, um, supportive. Yeah, well, that's Vicky. I wouldn't expect anything else. Of course, she can't be strong all the time. Well, even Vicky has her weaknesses. Clint, I'm going to be honest with you. I, uh, I don't know how much more time Roger has. And, and I know I'm not going to be very much help to Sarah Megan and Vicky, and I just hope that you'll be there when when the end comes. Well, Vicky's my whole life, Larry. I'll be there. I knew you would be. I had no doubts about that. How are you feeling? Larry. Hey, what are you still doing here? I told you to go home. Yeah, I, I can't leave now. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of good you're going to be to Roger Gordon's family when you pass out here in the hallway. Well, I just need a couple of cups of coffee. No, you're That's... going home, doctor. <laughs> Look, Larry, you've done everything that a man can do. It's in God's hands now. Sir, I'm sorry you're in that chair because of me. I'm in this chair because they like to baby people around here. It's the same way they're going to baby you once you get that antidote and you're feeling better. You really have to listen to Sarah, Roger. She underwent the bone marrow transplant to give you time. That's not a gift that you can let go to waste. I'm sorry, sweetheart. This is one gift I can't use. Yes, you can if you want to. Daddy, I know you. From the first time that you crawled out of attorney, you have fought for your life and everything that means. Don't you dare give up fighting now. Two against one. It's not fair. Lucky your sister isn't here or it would be three. I'd have no choice but to surrender and live. <clears throat> Has Megan come back yet? No, um, you know how emotional she gets. She didn't want to get upset and, and worry you here. I expect she just figured she'd be more useful elsewhere. Where? I 
I knew it. The last time she was here, I had the feeling she'd do something foolish and head for Eterna. Now, Dave, just calm down. You don't have to say anything. It's written all over your faces. Well, forget about me. Go, go find Megan. Make sure that she's all right. Roger, please calm down. Listen, I'm not important. Megan is. Make sure she's safe, Vicky. But, 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 most of all, make sure that, that she knows that I love her like, like I love you and Vicky. Daddy. Oh, make sure that, make that sure that she knows that I love her. That makes it, makes it so much easier. And don't worry about me. I have your love, so that makes it so easy. Oh, no. Yeah, I wanted to stick around a little bit there. Uh, Elliot kicked me out. Cool. Love, Dr. Elliot. Yeah. Now you let us take care of you for a while, okay? Us, you, us. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. almost ready. Hi, yeah. Dad. I was just about to put the stakes on. What are you doing here? Well, I couldn't very well let Brenda wear herself out making her uh, fancy fried chicken steaks, right? <laughs> What kind of doctor would that make me? <laughs> so Dan decided to help me with dinner, and then he told me about how what a great steak he makes, and I couldn't pass Not it. Not bad. Up. Well, you didn't have to go to that much trouble. That, it was no trouble at all. Now, you two are going to sit down, I'm going to serve this, and you two are going to enjoy it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right, enjoy. I don't know if I can enjoy anything, no matter how good a cook you are. Is it Roger, Dan? Yeah. I just don't know how much time he's got. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, I know you did everything you can, and believe me, I know, and no one could have done any better. No, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Well, he's alive, and we can always hope. And as Elliot says, he's in God's hands now. There's always a chance for a miracle. Right. Yeah. And where mommy and daddy? No. <laughs> well, your mommy is right here. Sweetheart, you are all back home, cozy and safe in your own home. Isn't that good? That's a good place to be, isn't it? Oh, sweetheart, it's good to have you back. You know, all that moving around really wasn't any good for you, and it's all over with. And I promise you, you're going to see your daddy often. I promise you that. Oh, well, oh, sweetheart. You want to know something else? Something very special? When I look at you, I see your daddy. I see so much of Max. In you. You have his eyes. So if I can have you with me, then I'll always have part of your daddy, too. Isn't that right? <laughs> oh, I love you. Elliot, please, say something. Look, I have to be honest with you both. He may never regain consciousness, and I'm sorry. I, I can assure you, though, that whatever happens, it'll be painless. Doctor, uh, how's he taking it in there? Your wife is a woman of rare courage, and so is Sarah Gordon. I just wish there was more I could do. They did it. They found it. Where the hell have you been? Eterna. What? That's where Roger contacted the poison. What better place to find the antidote? Antidote? You mean you found it? Yeah. There it is, Doc, what we've all been looking for. Oh, incredible. Now, of course, we have to do some tests. Tests? Roger Gordon's life is running out right now. If you don't give that to him, I will. No, hold on, Megan. The doctor knows what he has to do. Don't you, Doc? Yeah. It's, it's going to work. Both, no, both look, of us took it down in Eterna. This We're... is highly irregular. It's unethical. It's his only chance, What doctor. have you got to lose? All right, I'm going to prepare this for injection, but it right, may well, be hurry. too late. All we can do now is wait. And hope. Clint, is there anyone in there with my dad? Yes, Sarah and, uh, and Vicky. Well, that's where I should be now, too. Mm. 
Megan. Hi. Thank God you're all right. I wish yeah. Daddy could see you. He thought you went down to Eterna. That's what we were all afraid of. Well, actually, I, I did go down to Eterna, but I found the antidote. You what? what? You found it? Yes, well, with a little help from Max and Bo. In fact, Dr. Elliot is preparing an injection for Dad right now. Oh my God, we needed a miracle. You brought it to us. I can jump right out of this chair, not oh. you. Well, there'll be plenty of time for that. We just have to make sure that the antidote takes. If it takes. Well, of course it's going to take. This is the cure that we've been praying for. Yes, but Doctor told us not to get too hopeful. He doesn't know whether the antidote came in time. 